Good morning, Spark of Hope. I want to thank each of you now for joining me. I, I know you have a, a spirit and a heart that's ready to uh, receive hope and to talk about good things and things that are going to help our lives. Certainly, we as a church family, we've had a wonderful week of uh, praying together and Bible study and now we've come to Saturday Spark of Hope, and I pray that um, you can receive the things that I have here that I want to share with you today. Let's go into a word of prayer as we normally do, but as we pray, let's not um, let's not just have oh Spark of Hope once again. Here, here we go. W- once again, no, no, no. It's It's something good once again. Let me tell you, saints, nothing new is under the sun. That's scripture. And so sometimes things may feel uh, redundant, but they are not. When you are in purpose, redundant can be beautiful and mesmerizing. Just like a movie you like to watch over and over again. If it was done well, you don't mind watching it over and over again to the point we call some things classics, whether it's movie or clothes or cars or things of that nature. So as we go into prayer, we we don't have like, oh, spark of hope once again. We've gathered in his name to learn hope, happiness, and how to walk this walk. Father, in the name of Jesus. With a very grateful heart, we thank you. We thank you for the wonderful July that you gave us. We had food, we had clothes, we had shelter, and we take none of those things for granted. You were provider, you kept us, and we are so, so, so grateful. Now, Father, continue to keep us. Bless us in August and cause your face to shine upon us and give us peace, give us joy. Let our homes be filled with kindness and love and meet our needs and we will be so careful to give your name the thanks and the praise and every hope-filled believer said amen, amen. It's such a good feeling To know you're alive, it's such a happy feeling, knowing God dwells inside. And when you wake up, ready to say, new mercies every day, it's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know that God will see you through the day. He has blessings on the way. Just have faith that God is never late. Just you wait. Amen and amen. Let's move into our first topic. The first thing I have written for us to consider for the month of August is here. It's like your fears don't work. I'm going to repeat this, okay? It's like your fears don't work. I'm going to say it again, but I want you to hear this statement. But think positive, not in a negative way. It's like your fears don't work. I wrote this down because I heard a man, he was asked a question. He was turning 71 years old. And they said, what's next for your life? His reply was this, "Uh, the next 25 years of life will be spent tackling world issues. Now he's 71 and they were asking him, you know, what's next for your life? He had, uh, I think just recently retired and they were asking him, what do you want to do next? His reply with a specific number at 71, 
The next 25 years of my life will be spent tackling world issues. Well, if he's 71 and he's adding 25 years to his life, then it, he's showing that at least he expects to live to be 96. And at 96, he plans on still being uh, vibrant and vital. And I thought, this man has no uh, fear of death and dying and sickness. This man is all about life. And I wrote down, it's like your fears don't work. That this man had conquered those kinds of thoughts and feelings and he focuses on nothing but life and living. And I just, I just love that. So I want to say um, to those of us watching, as you look ahead, how do you see your life? See, this says to me, you, you have to have a mind filled with expectation. Now, let me tell you, this, this man was not a, uh, a Christian man, but he just believed so. So I'm admonishing us as Christians to let all of our fears be conquered and let's live starting now. Some of you say, well, I already do that. Great. Well, not all of us do. But let's begin to live that way. Those of you who are in your late 60s and early 70s, how do you see life for you in the future? And think about that. And all of us, no matter what your age is, you may be 90. <laughs> I think if the man was 90, he still might have said too, the next 25 years, it's possible. All things are possible. So I just wanted to give that little bit of encouragement for the month of August and don't allow your fears to work. Again, he replied at 71 years old, the next 25 years of my life. So go ahead and speak things by faith. Okay, our next topic. What history are you creating? I'm not going to speak on this very long, but I just want to throw this out into your thoughts for the month of August. What history are you creating? And I'm talking about, I want to pinpoint, like with each other, as families, as friends, as church family. Are we creating history of, you know, well, I don't really like this person or I don't get along with this person or I don't like this, I don't like that or just certain attitudes or arguments that we might be having. I heard a, a, a pastor in Texas and I already know because there was something on here that I wiped away like that. I know Nicole's going to be upset. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that on camera. Well, get over it. Well, anyway, what kind of history am I creating? You see there? What kind of history are you creating? Saints, sometimes it's the little things that are beginning to cause individuals to create history and harboring things that are so insignificant. But back to this pastor in Texas, his wife passed away. And he's like in his 70s. And he said, you know what? He said, I regret the little small arguments that was so stupid. They were just a waste of time. He didn't say they were like major arguments. That's not where he was coming from. 
But even little things, he said, you know, now he just regretted the little things. And I just want to ask us to put in our thoughts this August, as we go about life as normal and we face normal challenges, as we all do. But what history are we creating? And let it jolt your mind before you do or say something that really doesn't matter and it's not the history you'd like to create. Okay, here's our next thing that I want to again throw out to spark hope, to spark some thought on um, just ways that can make our lives, our daily lives better. I have here, update your thinking. Update your thinking. Now again, when you hear these things, let's not slip into Pentecostalism. Oh, the word of God never changes. You know, any of us that has been in church any length of time, we know that. So we also know when I say update your thinking that I'm not talking about the principles of the Bible. I'm talking about stop frying your chicken in vegetable oil and use avocado oil instead. <laughs> All right, That's, I'm talking about updating our thinking in those ways. If you go to banks and you hate and you get irritated and you almost start cussing folks out and, you know, then you start treating people mean at home because you've been tired of waiting in the bank so long, update your thinking and try online banking. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about as far as updated thinking. Avocado oil is a healthy fat. It's not going to clog your arteries up. Whereas the other things we were trained to fry with, um, you know, cause people to need heart surgery 30 years down the road. Updating your thinking. There are new ways to do things. You go like, oh man, I need to, I need to um, send such and such some information and you think, oh, man, it's going to take, you know, four days for it to get through mail. I read a quote, you know, uh, stop wasting your time licking stamps when you can send an email or a text. This is where I'm saying update your thinking. What am I saying? There are things in life that are becoming easier, new ways of doing things. And we have to be open to update our thinking. Let's not get old in our mind. Let's stay vibrant. It's okay to update your thinking and by golly, it's okay to update your hairstyle as well. <laughs> You know, sometimes, you know, say they're making better materials. You don't have to put plastic on the couch anymore. There's different sprays you can use to uh, guard the fabric. You don't have to use hot plastic. But thank God we're allowed to update our thinking. God is giving man wisdom. All right, I'm done being crazy. Let's move to our next topic, but put that out there. Don't be afraid to update your thinking. There is a magazine I've been reading called, it's a special time edition, The Power of Kindness. And there was an article that I thought was worth sharing called, you feel me? Question mark. And it says, do you know the difference between empathy and sympathy? Sympathy is feeling for someone. Empathy 
is feeling with someone. Another way to think of it, sympathy is observing a painting in a gallery. Empathy is being in the painting. It is entering into another's reality and valuing that person's feelings. For example, you see a new coworker fidgeting during the weekly meeting. You notice that she looks nervous. Empathy helps you relate to the fact that we're all a little unsure of ourselves in the first week at the office. So you then act. You invite her to grab lunch to make her feel more at ease. Research shows that practicing empathy boosts your own happiness and self-esteem, and empathetic kids are less likely to bully or discriminate against people who are not like them. In regard to kids, it says higher empathy in elementary age kids correlates with higher reading and math scores. Raising empathetic children when you don't practice empathy is virtually impossible. You don't teach children empathy by telling them about it. You got to do it. It goes on to give different things you can do. It says, number one, and I love this here, prioritize FaceTime. Emotional literacy or correctly interpreting, interp interpreting, let me stop there, my God. Emotional li literacy, here I go, we start to trip, don't we? Emotional literacy or correctly interpreting facial expressions is vital in developing empathy. It's harnessed through continuous exposure to face-to-face -to -face interactions, which are then memorized. Face-to-face -face encounters are where we learn to put body language, eye contact, and voice tone together. You know where this is headed. Every time you talk to your child or a friend or spouse without looking up from a screen, not only are you missing opportunities to read their face and understand what they are feeling, but you're also missing an opportunity to do the same with you. So curb your impulse to multitask between the digital and real worlds. The real world, after all, is where your loved ones live. Isn't that great? Follow the platinum rule in this. Do unto others as they would have you do unto them. In other words, think about how that person would want you to treat him, not how you would like to be treated. Also, watch your words specifically when it comes to conversations, let's say, about school. Always asking about assignments can send the signal that success trumps consideration for others. Maybe your language needs tweaking to include praise for character and compassion and not just performance. When your child has a conflict, don't rush to provide a solution. Instead, listen. Rush to build a connection that in turn can build developing, developing skills with your child. Emma made fun of Sarah's shirt and I laughed today. You could reply, I'm glad you told me. Now, how do you think, was that right? How do you feel Sarah felt? How can you make her feel better? The goal is to pause rather than criticize and give the child a chance to recognize his or her feelings. What's our takeaway here about empathy? My takeaway is consideration. Simple as that. Just considering one another. As I, I just read through this and I, I love the, the prioritize FaceTime and how, you know, it's just not in reading, but it's in our look, it's in our disposition. And in this digital world, there are some times where there has been a lot of miscommunication 
uh, because we can't see each other's face sometime. You know, maybe um, sometimes instead of texting, go ahead and call. Maybe sometimes instead of texting or calling, FaceTime. It's there. It's available. So let's begin to be more empathetic towards one another. Would you agree? And let's be considerate. And his people said, Amen. I hope you have enjoyed Spark of Hope today and you will carry these things to guide you in day-to-day -day living in the month of August. If you're going to give a seed of hope, you can do that now online. And I thank you for your support. Let's continue to remember one another in prayer. Keep on loving each other. Let your, let your hope be renewed and you keep on keeping on. God bless you. And as our elect lady always says, I love you to life. Thank you for joining me today. God bless you. I feel sincerely ignited. We truly believe in Brother Gregory. Yes, Definitely will be back. Excellent. Definitely will support it. If you want to live a life where you're totally free, you know, just free, come to Spark of Hope. What I'm taking away from Spark of Hope is that hope is what we have. We get, that has to be a paramount in our lives. I believe, God, that I'm healed, I'm delivered, and I'm set free. And so I'm just looking for greater, for greater things and spark of hope. Hope is alive, and it's alive in us through Jesus Christ. It's really awesome. It's inspiring. Um, I heard things today that I, I deal with and I struggle with, and it's changing me already. The Lord is using him in a way where he just speaks life. Yeah. And that's what he's doing, just speaking life into our lives and to our souls. Our hearts were sparking that hope.